everything, both in nature and the works of man, is produced by a process of building. The rock is built up of atoms, the planet, the animal, and men are built up of cells. A house is built of bricks, and a book is built of letters. A world is composed of a large number of forms, and a city of a large number of houses. The arts, sciences, and institutions of a nation are built up by the efforts of individuals. The history of a nation is the building of its deeds. The process of building necessitates the alternate process of breaking down. Old forms that have served their purpose are broken up, and the material of which they are composed enters into new combinations. There is reciprocal integration and disintegration. In all compounded bodies, old cells are ceaselessly being broken up, and new cells are formed to take their place. The works of man also require to be continually renewed until they have become old and useless when they are torn down in order that some better purpose may be served. These two processes of breaking down and building up in nature are called death and life. In the artificial works of man, they are called destruction and restoration. This dual process, which obtains universally in things visible, also obtains universally in things invisible. As a body is built of cells and a house of bricks, so a man's mind is built of thoughts. The various characters of men are none other than compounds of thoughts of varying combinations. Herein we see the deep truth of the saying, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Individual characteristics are fixed processes of thought, that is, they are fixed in the sense that they have become such an integral part of the character that they can only be altered or removed by a protracted effort of the will and by much self-discipline. Character is built in the same way as a tree or a house is built, namely, by the ceaseless addition of new material, and that material is thought. By the aid of millions of bricks a city is built, by the aid of millions of thoughts a mind, a character, is built. Every man is a mind builder, whether he recognizes it or not. Every man must perforce think, and every thought is another brick laid down in the edifice of mind. Such brick laying is done loosely and carelessly by the vast number of people, the result being unstable and tottering characters that are ready to go down under the first little gust of trouble or temptation. Some also put into the building of their minds large numbers of impure thoughts. These are so many rotten bricks that crumble away as fast as they are put in, leaving always an unfinished and unsightly building, and one which can afford no comfort and no shelter for its possessor. Dehabilitating thoughts about one's health, enervating thoughts concerning unlawful pleasures, weakening thoughts of failure, and sickly thoughts of self-pity and self-praise are useless bricks with which no substantial mind-temple can be raised. Pure thoughts, wisely chosen and well-placed, are so many durable bricks which will never crumble away, and from which a finished and beautiful building, and one which affords comfort and shelter for its possessor, can be rapidly erected. Bracing thoughts of strength, of confidence, of duty, inspiring thoughts of a large, free, unfettered, and unselfish life, are useful bricks with which a substantial mind temple can be raised, and the building of such a temple necessitates that old and useless habits of thought be broken down and destroyed. Build thee more stately mansions, O my soul, as the swift seasons roll. Each man is the builder of himself. If he is the occupant, of a jerry-built hovel of a mind that lets in the rains of many troubles and through which blow the keen winds of oft reoccurring disappointments, let him get to work to build a more noble mansion which will afford him better protection against those mental elements. Trying to weakly shift the responsibility for his jerry-building onto the devil or his forefathers or anything or anybody but himself will neither add to his comfort 
nor help him to build a better habitation. When he wakes up to a sense of his responsibility and the approximate estimate of his power, then he will commence to build like a true workman and will produce a symmetrical and finished character that will endure and be cherished by posterity, and which, while affording a never-failing protection for himself, will continue to give shelter to many a struggling one when he has passed away. The whole visible universe is framed on a few mathematical principles. All the wonderful works of man in the material world have been brought about by the rigid observance of a few underlying principles, and all that there is to the making of a successful, happy, and beautiful life is the knowledge and application of a few simple, root principles. If a man is to erect a building that is to resist the fiercest storms, he must build it on a simple mathematical principle or law, such as the square or the circle. If he ignores this, his edifice will topple down even before it is finished. Likewise, if a man is to build up a successful, strong, and exemplary life, a life that will stoutly resist the fiercest storms of adversity and temptation, it must be framed on a few simple, undeviating moral principles. Four of these principles are justice, rectitude, sincerity, and kindness. These four ethical truths are to the making of a life what the four lines of a square are to the building of a house. If a man ignores them and thinks to obtain success and happiness and peace by injustice, trickery, and selfishness, he is in the position of a builder who imagines he can build a strong and durable habitation while ignoring the relative arrangement of mathematical lines, and he will, in the end, obtain only disappointment and failure. He may, for a time, make money, which will delude him into believing that injustice and dishonesty pay well, but in reality his life is so weak and unstable that it is ready at any moment to fall, and when a critical period comes, as come it must, his affairs, his reputation, and his riches crumble to ruins, and he is buried in his own desolation. It is totally impossible for a man to achieve a truly successful and happy life who ignores the four moral principles enumerated, while as the man who scrupulously observes them in all his dealings can no more fail of success and blessedness than the earth can fail of the light and the warmth of the sun so long as it keeps to its lawful orbit, for he is working in harmony with the fundamental laws of the universe. He is building his life on a basis which cannot be altered or overthrown, and therefore, all that he does will be so strong and durable, and all the parts of his life will be so coherent, harmonious, and firmly knit that it cannot possibly be brought to ruin. In all the universe, forms which are built up by the great invisible and unerring power will be found that the observance of mathematical law is carried out with unfailing exactitude down to the most minute detail. The microscope reveals the fact that the infinitely small is as perfect as the infinitely great. A snowflake is as perfect as a star. Likewise, in the erection of a building by man, the strictest attention must be paid to every detail. A foundation must first be laid, and although it is to be buried and hidden, it must receive the greatest care and be made stronger than any other part of the building. Then stone upon stone, brick upon brick, is carefully laid with the aid of the plumb line, until at last the building stands complete in its durability, strength, and beauty. Even so it is with the life of a man. He who would have a life secure and blessed, a life freed from the miseries and failures to which so many fall victims, must carry the practice of the moral principles into every detail of his life, into every momentary duty and trivial transaction. In every little thing he need be thorough and honest, neglecting nothing. To neglect or misapply any little detail, be he commercial man, agriculturist, professional man, or artisan, is the same as neglecting a stone or a brick in a building, and it will be a source of weakness and trouble. The majority of those who fail and come to grief do so through neglecting the apparently insignificant details. 
It is a common error to suppose that little things can be passed by, and that the greater things are more important, and should receive all attention. But a cursory glance at the universe, as well as a little serious reflection on life, will teach the lesson that nothing great can exist which is not made up of small details, and in the composition of which every detail is perfect. He who adopts the four ethical principles as the law and base of his life, who raises the edifice of character upon them, who in his thoughts and words and actions does not wander from them, whose every duty and every passing transaction is performed in strict accordance with their exactions, such a man, laying down the hidden foundation of integrity of heart securely and strongly, cannot fail to raise up a structure which shall bring him honor and he is building a temple in which he can repose in peace and blessedness, even the strong and beautiful temple of his life.